You have to learn to distinguish when you look at the human figure, what is the difference between something that's a muscle and something that's a bone? Sometimes you look at a bump and you're like, oh, that's nice and round. But the thing is you have to know, oh, is that nice round shape? Is that a muscle or is that a bone? You'll notice that I've marked up what is muscle, what is bones. They are symmetrical if you're on the front view of the torso. Hit of the neck in the middle and then clavicles to the side. From the side view, the clavicles are not gonna be symmetrical. You can see that one of them is really, really short and the other one is quite long. Anytime you are not drawing a front view, you cannot expect them to be the same. A pull back when they attach to the shoulders. This part of your clavicle, which is right next to the pit of the neck, it's further forward than the clavicle back here on my shoulders. It's easy to assume, oh, they look flat, so they must be. Clavicles are shaped like S's. They are not straight. Oftentimes it's not that visible on some people, so you really have to remind yourself that it is an S curve. The S curve also, really easy to see above. Clavicles can really fool you. Sometimes when you're looking at clavicles, you can say, but it looks straight to me. I don't really see the S curve. And that's extremely common. Usually it's the front view that screws you up. Look at that, they look straight. On a two dimensional drawing surface, you might draw it as a straight line in your head. You're thinking about it as an S curve. Even if somebody's wearing a big scary mask and you look at that and you say, you know what, those look really straight. They're not, they're S curved, okay? They're bony landmarks, so they are underneath the surface of the skin, but they're not that obvious on some people. I mean, like, let's face it, not everybody is Angela Bassett. You look at this and you would be like, where are they? I have no idea. That's where your anatomy comes in, because if you know, oh, well, it's about here, that will help you. That's better than not having it at all. You can approximate, okay, I think they're about here. The clavicles will change their position in relation to the arms. Michael B. Jordan's clavicles have become a V shape. Look at how the clavicles now line up with the arms. You're not just drawing the clavicles in isolation. You're drawing them in relation to the arms. You cannot draw specific parts of the body by themselves because they're all interconnected. Clavicles can look really badass. If you're Killmonger, you're going to have clavicles to kill. They can be very elegant and really graceful. Think about, is this an elegant clavicle or is this a powerful clavicle that's gonna kick my butt? This is why people wear strapless dresses. It's because if you wear a strapless dress, you get these like beautiful clavicles that are on display. Here's how I think about a strapless dress in terms of anatomy. It's basically like show off time for the clavicles. The chromium process, some people it's really, really visible. Like it looks like mountain peaks or something. And thank goodness, Michael just looked so good. His acromion process on the right-hand side has its own freaking shadow. Like that never happens. If you look at this guy, it's like, okay, where's your acromion process? You just go, okay, I think it's here. It's at the end of the clavicle. People sometimes think the acromion process is part of the clavicle, but it's not. It's actually part of the scapula. The acromion process, it's like this little tip that sort of curls forward from the scapula anterior superior iliac spine. Two little tips that are at the end of the pelvis. So that like round butterfly part of the pelvis, that's the iliac crest, the top of it. The ASIS, you have to understand how it relates to the belly button because it's above the belly button. Symphysis pubis, this is another bony landmark. It's below the ASIS. The other thing that people mess up all the time is that the genitalia on both the male and the female figure, it's underneath the symphysis pubis. People oftentimes will put the genitalia too high. That's the more common mistake that I see. People don't usually put it too low, but oftentimes I'll see people, they'll put the genitalia like on the symphysis pubis, which it's not, it's, it's below. 